Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channel's television. A reminder of our top stories. President Mamadou Buhari assures Nigerians of free and fair elections in 2019, having been a beneficiary of a free election himself. People with disabilities in Austrian state want INEC to introduce measures to allow them to take part in electoral processes. One person killed, 11 others injured after a church building collapses at Ogolo, Delta State. And a suicide attack in the Somali capital, Mogadishu, leaves three soldiers dead and 14 others injured. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you and on YouTube.com slash channels where we can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Let's take a look at uh, some of the pictures that you sent in. We begin with this image of the Mayfair Lagera Road in Ilefe, Oshun State, showing this bad portion of the road. Eyewitness reporter says that this section of the road brings hardship on motorists and residents. He wants the state government to look in their direction and help. Still on infrastructure is this image from Mbari community at Buruku local government area of Benue State. Our eyewitness reporter is raising concern over the state of the road, which is being washed away by gully. He says the road can become a death trap over time if it's not quickly checked. A final image is from Oweri, the Imo state capital. We see this heap of refuse along Douglas Road. Eyewitness reporter says this dump site is an eyesore, as you can see, and that is aside from the health implication on residents and passers-by. She wants the refuse cleared. Thank you for sending in those pictures, and know that you too can become an eyewitness for Channel's television. Governors of the southeast states are calling on the federal government to urgently intervene on the runway and tarmac of the Akanui Biam International Airport in Inugu. Speaking on behalf of the governors, after a regional forum in Enugu State, the Eboin State Governor, Dave Omahi, called for the cargo section of the airport to be reactivated. The leaders also discussed the need for better integration and development in the region. Through the forum, I appreciate the federal government for the intervention of the Akan with the International Airport in But however, draws his attention to the deplorable state of the runway, the runway lights and the tarmac, and call on the Honorable Minister of State for Aviation to visit the airport for an urgent assessment and urgent intervention. We are aware that the contract was given to the company that uh, the surface some sections of the tarmac, but uh, we don't know whether the tarmac is worst uh, on such uh, completion of uh, the sections. So our demand is that the minister should come with experts to look at it. Also, the, there is runway light recently installed, but it's as good as nothing because the brightness is not there at all. And then you have a case where an international airport, you know, no flight can land from 6 30. That's not acceptable. There is also one building that is in front of the airport that was destroyed, well, maybe by thunderstorm. They wouldn't take the federal government 10, 15 million to fix it. It's an eyesore. So we request to, that the Honorable Minister of State for Transport for Aviation should please, as a matter of uh, urgency and for the sake of the lives of our people, and of course, other Nigerians, do immediate intervention by visiting and direct the contractors to come and do the right thing. Labor unions and civil society groups have been long calling for an increase of the minimum wage for Nigerian workers. As the workers anticipate a favorable 
and speedy response from the federal government, our correspondent Olumide Makoli takes a cl closer look at the situation that has left the minimum wage on the same level it has been for many years. The issue of the minimum wage is all what all civil servants are looking up to. The government has promised us that the minimum wage will be increased. So we are waiting for uh, the new year, maybe the first quarter of this new year, they can start implementing the new minimum wage. That was in 2017, and the workers are still waiting. As the new minimum wage remains an imaginary one, until the tripartite committee set up by the president, Muhammad Buhari, to review the minimum wage fulfills its mandate. My hope is that the outcome of the deliberations of the committee would be consensual and generally acceptable. We have already started sitting and we believe that before, within the, the next two to three quarters, we should be able to conclude and make our recommendations known to uh, Mr. President. But that was some quarters ago. Those recommendations were based on the increase called for by Labour. Minimum wage of 18,000 since 2011 cannot take me and you anywhere. So the Labour is saying that our demand is to be paid 66,500. What did I say? 66,000. No more. State governors were not silent on the issue, even those from different political parties. Governor Yesna Wike of the PDP and Governor Rocha Sokorocha of the APC seeming to agree, at least in part, that states should have more of a hand in determining their minimum wages. All that we have said as governors and all we have said is that let wages be paid according to capacity of the state. You cannot, for instance, expect, uh, expect uh, uh, Imo to pay what Lagos is paying. So many states cannot pay salary now. And if the minimum wage is increased, how would they be able to look at how the one it is they can't pay? So federal government should review the revenue sharing uh, formula. Whichever way you look at it, the longer the delay in implementing a new minimum wage for the Nigerian worker, the more economic hardship that worker is exposed to, as the wait continues with the hope that it will be sooner rather than later. Olumide Makoli, Channels Television News. Channels Television's in-house data analyst Babajide Ogusowo joins us now to give us a clearer picture of what's going on. Babajide, hi. Um, we playing board games tonight. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> it's, it's minimum wage and we'll try and really get into the board games um, Okay, at least right I now. see Naira, so I know you're, you're, you're serious about this. But let's begin with um, the battle between Labour and the federal government on the issue of uh, minimum wage. Has there ever been in the history of the world an agreement between Labour and the government on how much the average worker should be paid? No, people want more. Some people want to even live forever. Mm. So perhaps we should look at what, where all of this has started from. This is now seven years and three decades past the first national minimum wage in Nigeria. So the real question is, which is of greater value? The 125 naira per month minimum wage of 1981 or the 18,000 naira minimum wage of today. But before we decode that, I want us to quickly play a short game. Now it's imperative that you make a wise decision. So yeah. today, which would you pick between $1 million worth of monopoly money or 18,000 naira minimum wage? Let me hold on to the 18,000 for a while. I guess there's much that you'll pick the 18,000 out. I can't spend that. Well, listen carefully to this argument. I bought this board game for 22,000 now. And inside this board game is fake currency. So in simple terms, all of this fake currency that I bought for 22,000 now is what more than your minimum wage. And that is the challenge we have today. Fake monopoly money is worth more than the minimum wage. And so, yes, there's a right agitation for an increment in minimum wage. But the challenge is inflation. Mm -hmm. Let's look at today's minimum wage of 18,000. Is it really 18,000? No. 
And that's because inflation, from March 2011, when President Jonathan signed the minimum wage, inflation has risen by 60%. So in real terms, today's minimum wage is only 7,500 naira. That is the challenge, Amar. That, that doesn't sound pleasant. But, but is there a consensus among economists on the positive effects of a higher minimum wage? The argument continues. There are some that argue that there are advantages of a minimum wage, and some say, no, we shouldn't have a minimum wage. So let's look at the top three arguments of both sides. First, those that say there should be a minimum wage. Three arguments. They say that there's no Nigerian worker today who is earning a minimum wage that can afford to pay for rent in any part of Nigeria that can afford to pay for a two-bedroom apartment. True. So there's a need for a minimum wage. The second argument is today's minimum wage is leading to maximum suffering. How so? Because workers can't live on their minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Now the third argument is it is actually better to have lived in the Nigeria of 1981 when the minimum wage was 125 naira per month. Because the 125 naira per month minimum wage of 1981 is equivalent to 50,000 naira today. So there's a rare and strong argument for there to be an increment in the minimum wage. But again, there are those that say no to a minimum wage. What are the arguments? The first is they talk about productivity, and that's led by Milton Friedman. His argument, and he's a Nobel Prize winner, he says that minimum wage should be about productivity, not about policy. So he has a strong argument. The second argument is they say, which is the evidence from the National Bureau of Statistics, that two out of three workers in Nigeria today, full-time workers, are self-employed. So in reality, the minimum wage applies to very few people, especially if you look at the third argument. The minimum wage today, as it stands in the policy, every company that has employed less than 50 workers you're not, it's not compulsory to pay the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how many companies in Nigeria employ more than 50 workers? And the evidence shows only 4% of companies in Nigeria employ more than 50 workers. So we've seen two arguments, those in favor of a higher minimum wage and those in Milton Friedman's side that says pay based on productivity, not based on policy. Babajide, you have the numbers, you have the facts, you have everything spread in front of you. What would you advise at this time? First is, the most important thing, Amarachi, is that let's look at the happiest country in the world, Finland, based on the 2018 World Happiness Report. Mm. Finland doesn't have a minimum wage, yet they are the world's happiest country. Unemployment rate in Finland, below 10%. So the message and the most important thing tonight, oh yes, a minimum wage is good, oh yes, it's good if we can afford to pay based on productivity and 50,000 hours. But the most important message is your happiness mm. does not depend on money. So many Nigerians would disagree with you. I mean, if you improve the standard of living, of course, I mean, the minimum wage should make sense. But, oh, yes. Again, yeah. which will you prefer? Are you going to stick I'm to that? I'm still going to hold on to this, Pavajide. I mean, this I can spend. Thanks a lot. Thanks for, thanks for coming on the News at 10. And thanks for this lovely gift also. Uh, when the news at 10 returns, palm oil producers in Urumba North local government area of Anambra State I international market for their produce. We'll have more on this on our community reports. Please stay with us.